with entrepreneurship, for me, you, you need risk involved. And I didn't feel that risk because I was, I was making a good living and I was putting the money in my pocket and I wasn't taking any chances to try and really grow the business. And I picked a bunch of low hanging fruit um, and then I got to the middle of the tree, but I never really reached for the top of the tree to try and put my balls out there and see what I could do. Hey, what's up? Welcome back to the Cash VT Lunch Hour podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Aaron LeBauer, and today I've got a special guest. Uh, his name is Steve Edelson, and Steve is one of, uh, I was trying to figure out, like, it, one of Aaron's uh, secret advisory board members. He probably doesn't know it, but he knows it, uh, but you don't know it. And I've had one of these or two of these people on the podcast before. Um, my cousin, Gil Zimmerman, uh, my good friend, Seth, was at one of our Platinum Mastermind members. And today it's Steve's turn because uh, Steve and I go way back. We used to watch Law & Order uh, well past midnight um, to get away from school. I know Steve from uh, college, and uh, he's one of those few people I turn to uh, when you know I, I got something I really need. I know Steve's got my back, so Steve, uh, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here today. Thanks, Aaron. How's it going? Good, man. It's really good to see you. I think it's been like two years or something like that, right? Too long. Too long. <laughs> So um, let's start this. I, I just want people to know a little bit uh, about you, but what's your, like, what's your uh, PG rated best memory <laughs> of me? <laughs> like, do you remember, like, was there something about me that you remember that we did uh, together or, or that was kind of funny that, you know, like we can start this off? So I'll give you two. And one of them, I'm pretty sure it was you. It could be Eric, but I'm pretty <laughs> sure it was you. It was sophomore year, so it was your junior year. Came back to East Campus. I was unloading, getting out of the car, and you were like, "I got this new band you have to hear," and it was Rusted Root. Oh, right. And I'm pretty sure that I, I'm pretty sure it was you because I, I wasn't a music guy. I was like Rusted yeah. Toots, like whatever, whoever with these guys. But you were all jazzed about this Rusted Root. And then we went to go see them a couple times. I think we went to. Wake Forest to see him. We saw him a couple of festivals that year. Yeah. And then another one was just the uh, the blue suit that you wore to, <laughs> I think, whose wedding was it? That was one of our like formal dances that we went to. Formal dances. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and I awesome. took Liz with me and she had some like 1970s like yes. pink ruffled dress. That was really That awesome. was awesome. Awesome. So if y'all want to see a picture of me in my uh, blue ruffled tuxedo, you're going to have to go dig because it might not be on social media. <laughs> <laughs> I think we could find one for sure. Yeah, that's great. But I remember see, like this, like my fondest memories of hanging out was like watching Law and Order. It was just like, we're just like, yes. we're done. Night owls. I mean, I'm still kind of 3 a.m. 3 a.m. It came on. Oh, man, that was tough. So it was like study, 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 and then watch uh, some Law and Order for a while and procrastinate some more. Something like that. Yeah, I don't know about the study, study, study part <laughs> for me, but <laughs> you graduated. I, I know I, pulled, I, gra I, I, pulled I, I graduated. Down, right? I did. I graduated. So, um, we, so just for so everyone knows, we went to Duke and uh, we like Duke basketball, not Carolina. Let's just put that out there, right? Yeah. Um, when we're in college, like I know, um, just from hanging out with you, like your dad ran a um, medical supply business, right? Correct. Yep. Did you know when we were in college, like that that's what you were going to do when you graduated? Was that part of like your plan or his plan? I did not. You know, I don't I don't think it was part of his plan. He never pushed it on me. He never talked about it like it was never discussed that that was part of the plan. I came out of college. Um, I didn't I wanted to I wanted to be like an investment banker or a consultant to get one of those jobs. But because you had me watching Law and Order at 3 a.m. instead of studying, you know, I didn't have the grades to uh, to get one of those jobs. So I wound up um, going into the restaurant industry and actually Seth, the guy you just mentioned, I wound up working for his dad um, and I was running a restaurant that he opened in Manhattan that oh, I had yeah, no I remember business. That. Yeah, yeah. it's called Titono's and I had no business running it. Like Seth put me in contact with his dad because I was student manager at the Oak Room. So he thought because I was student manager at like the on-campus restaurant at Duke, I even know something about running a restaurant in Manhattan wrong. Um, so I worked for him for, I don't know, six, 10 months, um, worked my butt off. Like that was like a, 
hundred hour a week job, like not knowing what I was doing. And we, he wound up selling it because we didn't succeed. We didn't really know how to run a restaurant. And I was collecting unemployment and I was just sitting at home and the clock was ticking. And my mom said to me, she's like, why don't you talk to dad about going to work for him? I was like, huh. And uh, I said, hey, dad, how about I come work for you? And I had worked for him as a salesman during the summers at Duke one year, you know, just going out and hustling, you know, medical supplies to doctors. And he's like, if you want to do it, come on board. And, you know, he brought me on board and I started out, you know, in the warehouse. I started out driving a truck. I started out doing sales. Um, and slowly, you know, I learned a little bit about the whole business and then I wound up taking over the business. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You, you know, like here's, here's the moment that I had, and I've shared this on my podcast before, but you know, these people I'm walking down West campus with Sam to the left, Lex to the right, Sam's six foot five, yeah. Lex is Lex like is five not. two or <laughs> something like, but he was built like a tank, yeah. right? And they were talking about blah, 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 consulting, blah, 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 blah. And that's all I was hearing. And Lex goes, Aaron, have you taken your resume to the resume drop? And I'm like, what the fuck's the resume drop? Like, I mean, like, I didn't even know, like, clearly, yeah. like, my path wasn't the same is theirs. I was already told not to go to med school because I couldn't get past organic chemistry. Right. And being a teacher wasn't an option because I showed up for the first meeting and the woman was like, what are you doing here? The first meeting was last week. And I was like, but the paper says the first meeting is this week. Did looking back, did you have any of those moments where you were trying to go down this path? And besides me keeping you up at night, uh, <laughs> did, that, that you were like, it just was like, no, that's those aren't the paths for me. No, you know, like I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Like maybe similar to you, I went to Duke thinking I would be a doctor and whatever class I didn't even get to Orgo, like whatever class freshman year, I struggled with too much, maybe realized that wasn't the path I was going to go down. And I didn't really know what the options were. I, I don't think Duke did a great job letting you know what the options were unless you wanted to be a consultant or an investment banker. So that's kind of what I thought maybe I would try and do. And I didn't really... I didn't really think about it. And when I couldn't do that, I came to New York and I got a job as a waiter. And before I set stat hired me, and I was still trying to hustle myself to get a job as a banker or a consultant. I didn't even really know what else there was for me. So I didn't yeah. have an aha moment. Yeah. So that's cool. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's like, I think, and everyone has a different thing. It's like, I just remember that moment going, okay, I don't know what it is, but it's not these three things, but no one there knew what to do with me. Um, was it was it just this opportunity like so now i just want to kind of catch everyone up and we can talk about a couple things here but you took over your dad's business but now you've started your own business it's more of a passion for you uh schm <laughs> smushed i want to say smushed, it yeah. smushed which is an ice cream uh business but was there um what was it along the way that um kind of kept you moving forward down this path of being an entrepreneur? Was it the fact that you grew up and your dad owned a business and it just kind of flowed naturally? Or were there times where you were like, this isn't for me and I need to figure that I need to figure something else out, or this is definitely for me because X, Y, and Z. It's a, it's a good question. You know, up until recently, I never really considered myself an entrepreneur. I considered myself a business person. Mm -hmm. You know, I took over my dad's business and I grew it and I implemented some change but I, I didn't really take very many risks with that business. You know, like I didn't, it was a job for me. I was interested in business. I was interested in learning about business and transactions and how to take care of customers, and deal with vendors and do all that. But with entrepreneurship for me, you, you need risk involved. And I didn't feel that risk because I was, I was making a good living and I was putting the money in my pocket and I wasn't taking any chances to try and really grow the business. And I picked a bunch of low hanging fruit um, and then I got to the middle of the tree, but I never really reached for the top of the tree to try and put my balls out there and see what I could do. Um, and then that changed a little bit, you know, like part of it was I, I was never passionate about needles and syringes and EKG machines. You know, I liked business, but there was no passion about the items that I was selling. I was passionate about, customer service, but not about my product. Um, I wound up selling that business. And then I was working for the company that I sold that business to. And 50, rewind 15 years. And I had this idea for another business where you walk into a store 
and you can pick a cookie. You can make two different cookies. There's a whole bunch of cookies. And you can make a chocolate chip cookie on top and an M&M cookie on the bottom. And you can pick whatever ice cream you want in the middle and you can wrap it around with sprinkles or Heath bar or coconut or whatever and create your own ice cream sandwich. And that ice cream sandwiches weren't really that big of a thing. Nobody was really doing it. There's one place out in California that was doing it. And this became like dinner party fodder with me and my friends for 15 years. Like we talk about it. I actually, you know, I was out to dinner with Sam, that guy you mentioned and his cousin. And we were talking about this idea and his cousin was like, I got a great name for you. The name is Smushed. So that was 10 years ago. And 10 years ago, I went to GoDaddy and I registered www.smushed.com nice. just in case. And I still had, still had, you know, Imperial Surgical and I had a, I had a comfortable living and I was doing fine. And I didn't have the, the, the entrepreneurship profile to go do this. You know, I wasn't willing to take the risk. I sold my business about three years ago. And in the middle of the pandemic, I was talking about this idea like I had been for the past 15 years. And Sarah, my wife said to me, you know, either stop talking about it or do it. And that was my aha moment with this one. You know, like, and I absorbed that and A, she challenged me. B, she was right. Like I talked about it. Like I have an opportunity in my life right now to do it. Why don't I go do it? So I spent a lot of time learning how to make cookies. You know, I'd never baked a cookie in my life, learning how to make ice cream, testing recipes, you know, learning the science behind it, inviting friends over. You know, I had a vision of how I wanted to work. And I did that for the summer of 2020. And then in the fall of 2020, I was like, you know, Sarah, I'm just gonna, just gonna put a post out on social media and see if anybody wants to pay me for mm -hmm. these ice cream sandwiches. And that was November, 2020. And lo and behold, since then, more and more people every day are paying me for these ice cream sandwiches. Dude, that's crazy. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. I want to go back to something and I want to come back to this, but I want to go back to something that you were telling us about when you went to work with your dad at Imperial Surgical, you were like, I cleaned the, I cleaned the toilets. I worked in the factory. I did, you did yep. everything to learn the business, right? Yep. Yep. Do you, I mean, like, how has that uh, shaped the way that you've built your new business? Because I, I can see just implied, like, that's going to teach you how to run the whole thing, right? But how has kind of that progress um, that you uh, made and, and those steps you took then, how has that prepared you to launch a brand new business? Um, I don't know if this is exactly the answer to the question, mm -hmm. but it's related to the question. I learned to do everything at Imperial Surgical. And I did everything in Imperial Surgical. And one of my weaknesses there was I didn't hire people. I didn't delegate. You know, I did it all myself or I tried to do it all myself. And it worked, but it didn't work as well as it could have worked. It really limited me. Um, so now with Smushed, I'm recognizing that. And yes, do I, did I have to do everything first? And did I have to learn how to do everything first? Absolutely. But I've been much more willing to delegate and hire already to let people make the cookie dough, let people make the ice cream, let people put together the sandwiches, you know, like, and yes, will they not do it exactly how I want them to do it? No, but I could train them to get them pretty close. Um, and it's given me a little bit more time and freedom to sleep a little, which is nice to spend some time with my family, which is nice, but also to focus on growing the business and what it's going to take me to take this to the next step. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, also Law and Order is on 24 hours a day on like Peacock <laughs> it's and all the Netflix. Time. So. <laughs> it's on all the time. <laughs> yeah, but I think that's a really good that's a really good lesson. So what are so besides kind of producing uh, the the product right now? Do you have people doing anything else in your business for you? Um. I have a couple of people that are working events for me, so I don't have to, like, we do birthday parties, so I don't have to go be the guy doing the birthday party. I have a couple of people working for me that I can send out and do the birthday party. Um, other than that, no, you know, like, I'm still doing the social media. I'm still doing the marketing. I'm still, you know, figuring out the, the behind the scenes stuff, yeah. um, which is the way it should be right now. Yeah. What... Um... I remember when we talked about this, I think sometime last year in 2020, you were like, Aaron, it's on the DL, like, yeah. you know, like, and, and I think with the restaurant industry specifically, there's lots of regulations and they're different for every city or township or state. Yeah. Um, 
what are what were some of the big hurdles that uh, you had to go through um, to get this thing going? And like, what's the what's the status now with like with your business um, in regards to like the regulations and things like where are it, we it's an evolution the, right? the regulations are challenging and tough it's something that i don't even have a complete handle on yet but i'm learning um i'm trying to navigate i'm you know trying to get assistance to try and figure that out um trying to take the business out of my house so that it can actually you know get be fully permitted so i could sell in stores so i could do other things that i'm not doing now currently yeah. Have you listened to, uh, this, this is very similar to the, um, what's it, uh, Stacy's pita chips. Um, how I built this on NPR has a podcast episode. And I listened right. to it a few, a month or two ago about Stacy and her pita chips. Did you, have you happened to listen to that? I, I yeah. haven't I've listened to a couple of those, how I built this and yeah. it's great, but I'm sure yeah. she has a good story. Yeah. Her, the, the short of her story was they had a shopping cart, like a, a food cart and they were trying to sell sandwiches and they were using pita bread. But they had all this leftover pita bread and someone was yeah. like, well, why don't you make it into chips? And they, the chips were what were selling out and yeah. they were give, actually giving them away. And then, but I think one of their big hurdles was um, kitchen space, right? Yeah. And they have to pay a certain amount. So I'm sure there's a point at which you're like, I need to make sure this thing works and people actually want it before I go and pay someone gobs of money to, you know, help me figure out the regulations or even just rent, you know, $10,000 a month for a shared kitchen or a rest or a yeah. permanent restaurant. I mean, there's, there's a process to that, right? A hundred percent, you know, and it's something that I, I've been doing and yes, I've spent a year now in my house refining recipes, you know, with capacity, like my wife's not that pleased. I keep getting extra freezers and encroaching more <laughs> upon our house and taking over more of the house. And, uh, it, this business at the scale it is now is not meant to be a home business anymore. Like yeah. It needs to, it needs its own dedicated space that I'm working on right now. What's the next step? Like what's the next step? So, well, let's go back before what's the next step. So right now, um, uh, like how many cookies are you selling a week or how many events are you doing? Like what's the, what's kind of the size and scale is so we can get an idea about where October you're October was a really great month for us. Um, you know, I have probably, six or seven events in October, you know, more than one a weekend and almost mm -hmm. two per weekend, um, which is great. You know, birthday parties, festivals, bar mitzvahs, you know, all different types of events. Um, and then I do a bunch of sales as well. Like tomorrow I'm having a sale outside my house, you know, a sidewalk sale where kids will come after school, parents will come bring their kids. You know, I'll probably sell between 150 and 200 ice cream sandwiches tomorrow outside my house. It's going to be one of those warm October days in New York. So figured I'd take yeah. advantage of it. Um, but yeah, like, I mean, I, I could sell anywhere from 150 to 400 sandwiches in a week. Right now. Nice. That's a lot. Yeah, <laughs> That's yeah a, it's a lot. It's a lot. That's awesome. I mean, if my yeah. kids did that and I, if I float, if I paid for all their product and they sold that much on the sidewalk, they'd be able to give away a ton of money. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. Exactly so, right. um, what's the net, like, where do you want this to go? Like, what's your five year, five year plan or ten year plan? Like, what's your ultimate goal with this business? So, I have a, I have several goals. My number one goal is to find something, and I think I have that I am passionate about, that I enjoy doing, that I enjoy going work to work every day, and that I could use as a vehicle to do good and give back to my community. Um, so that's my number one goal. My number two goal is to become a retail success. You know, the business has become a catering business and that's a lot because I don't have a retail store. So, you know, no one's just driving up and knocking on the door and saying, Hey, can I make an ice cream sandwich? Can I have an, can I have an ice cream sandwich? I need a retail presence to be able mm -hmm. to do that. So I'd like to be able to prove the concept on a retail basis. And then I don't see why in five years there can't be four or five or six of these across Long Island. And in 10 years, you know, I'm not going to say it out loud, but, you know, maybe become a little bit regional, like who knows, you know. But I also leave open the space that one shop could satisfy me. You know, I have that entrepreneurship instinct right now that is dreaming big on it. But I don't want to push that if I do find that the one shop does fulfill and satisfy my life. That is a possibility. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I've definitely heard like, and I know that sometimes people open up like one rest, like the restaurant business is tough. 
right? Yep. And they'll open one restaurant and does great, but then by the time they try to open the second, they both suffer because the systems or something was different or wrong, or they just didn't actually uh, plan like this other community might not like the thing or there's a lot of reasons why. I mean, I can see yeah. where that's like a big, um, that's a big hurdle. Um, what, uh, what are you doing? Right? Like, do you have any thing that you're putting in place right now? Systems processes that, that you're building up right now, um, with the idea that, you know, I'm doing it now because it's going to allow me to scale beyond one location or regionally. In the um, future? I'm in the process of looking into bigger equipment so that I could have larger capacity to be able to make more ice cream at one time. Mm -hmm. um, whether or not that could support more than one location or whether or not, you know, I, I think it's a matter, I think if I were to have one consolidated location that was making ice cream and distributing it to several locations, I think I'd probably need four or five locations to make that worthwhile rather than producing it at each location each time. Um, so no, there's nothing. There's nothing in particular now that I'm doing yeah. to prepare for yeah. five, okay. six, seven, eight shoot doors. Cool. Um, I, and you probably think a lot more like me than like I think if I asked Sam, he'd be like, oh, "I already have the plan." It's really yeah. <laughs> you know, that, that, like... that's one. That's one of the things that Sarah and I. I'm more of a think about the idea, get the idea, go do it. Like I'm not a business plan, draw it out, make the model, it's Excel spreadsheet type of guy. Like, yeah. yes, do I use them a little bit? And then do I need to check to make sure that my concepts work for sure? But I am more of a just like get the idea and go do it and figure it out later. Yeah. You know, Sam, it was funny when I started my my clinic, I was talking to Sam about it and he's like, well, he's like, hold on. I think I want to say we were like in person together. He's like, move over. He's like, mm -hmm. let me build a spreadsheet for me. And he built me a spreadsheet to help me estimate my income and expenses in like four yeah. seconds. And then it's yeah. something, I mean, and that's something that I've put in my course to help other people. But it was like, I was like, wow, my brain doesn't do that. But now that he's yeah. done that for me, it's like, sweet. I can just use this yeah. thing anytime. It's really kind of cool. Um, Steve, uh, I got one more question, uh, for you about the retail. And I want to talk about like the marketing and things that you've been doing with that. Cause that seems sure. to be working well, but what is it that you need to have happen in order to know, like the retail space is going to happen? Like what has to happen between where you are now as more of a catering business to like a retail business? Is there like, is it a volume thing? Is it a, is it like a, is there a process? Is there a regulation thing that you have to overcome? I mean, what's the, what's the next, what are the next two steps to get there? Um, the next step is to either sign a lease to rent a place or buy a building yeah. and go through the permitting process. But, you know, I just need, I need to take the risk, try it and see, you know, market the hell out of it and produce a great product and give yeah. great customer service and get people to come. But I'm there, you know, like I'm, I'm right there. I just have to pull the trigger. Yeah. That's awesome. What, was there anything like this? when you did this at like Imperial Surgical, is there anything like comparable to this or this is brand new territory for you? No, this is brand new. Like there was a lot of conceptual talk and that's one of the things that frustrated Sarah was that I would conceptually talk about a lot of things, but not do mm -hmm. it. Um, and I was very risk averse. Yeah. Um, and that's one of the things like when she challenged me, she's like, you talk about things all the time, like stop talking about it, do it. Yeah. So now I'm doing it. Yeah. What scares you about this? Turning my life upside down. You know, like, I I don't even, two things. One, I'm not a baker and I'm not an ice cream maker. You know, like, <laughs> I taught myself how to do it using YouTube and Google. You know, like, that doesn't make me a baker. You know, like, the fact that I've baked, I don't know, 10,000 cookies in the past year, I, I'm just guessing, that doesn't make me a baker. So the fact that I really don't know what I'm doing and I don't even know what I don't know scares me. And two... The, the time commitment that's going to be involved and the amount of effort and energy, you know, the 24 seven, like I know what it's like to have my own business and to getting back into that and the sacrifice that's going to be made missing out on my family and all that worries me. Like I do sometimes question like, why am I doing this? Again? Yeah. Yeah. What, what excites you so much that makes it worth the, the risk? Two things. One. So I find what I do really interesting. I really love what I do. Um, there's been an ego fulfillment in this job that I never had before. And I didn't anticipate, you know, like I'm making ice cream and I'm making cookies and I'm putting them together and I'm giving a product that people really like. Mm -hmm. 
I'm not an artist, but there's an artist in part of what I'm doing. And there's an ego, like when someone is like, holy cow, that's delicious. Or that's the best cherry vanilla ice cream I've ever had. That feels good. You know, like, and I've never had that professionally in my life before. So that is definitely exciting. Like when I would meet people, you know, like, what's your name? Where are you from? What do you do? So my name is Steve. I'm from Long Island and I sell medical supplies. On to the next person. Like nobody was interested, you know, like nobody wanted to talk. But, you know, like a couple months ago, this past summer, I went on a white rafting, white water rafting trip. And it was the first time since smushed, especially because of the pandemic, that I had met new people. And we were all, on, you know, a bunch of new people on the raft. And I was talking to people, what do you do? Where are you from? My name is Steve. I'm from Long Island. And I just started this ice cream sandwich business. Now, all of a sudden, everybody's interested and wants to know and ask questions. And, you know, like it's almost becomes too much. Like, and, it's all about me, like all any like all anybody wants to talk about is smushed in what I do. And it becomes too much, but it is nice and interesting that my life outside, you know, my kids and whatever has interest to me and other people now. Yeah, that's awesome. You've got I mean, yeah. I know you've got some other party tricks, but you're probably not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I have no idea. No idea. <laughs> Dude, that's so awesome. Um okay, so you basically started this thing what you say social media like you've got a really like instagram page i think is kind of really where you started right did you start putting it out on facebook i started it on facebook um i put a post out on like a local mom's group or whatever like in the Mm -hmm. town that i live in facebook um i had an instagram i didn't really i used instagram to document a trip that i took but i had never really used or followed instagram before um but Instagram has really taken off. Um, but Facebook is my pri- is my number mm. one source for social media and referrals and marketing. But I'm trying to grow the Instagram following. It's taken off nicely mm. and it helps for sure. But in terms of actually transactional business, Facebook is more successful. So you got into like you got into a mom's group, even though you're a dad. Yeah, like me. Like, it might actually be moms and dads. I'm not moms sure. But, yeah. but Parents, what, what was it that you posted or did or said or commented on in there that like got this thing, the ball rolling? I put up a post basically saying um, who I was. And, you know, I don't I, I, I had a Facebook page, but I post maybe once or twice a year. Like it's not something that I really did. Um, I put up a post with a couple pictures of what I was doing. And I said, hey, I'm going to have a sale outside my house. Um, come on down tomorrow, I don't remember, three o'clock. And I had no idea whether any would come, no one would come, no idea. And there was a line down the block. Like, wow. it, it was it was in the middle of the pandemic. Um, people were looking for anything to do outside. It was a beautiful November day and people just came down with their kids. And I was like, huh, maybe I'm onto something. And then... I started posting these little sampler packs and I would put up a post and I, I was like, Hey, I have seven packs of four ice cream sandwiches post in the comments if you want one and I'll deliver it to your house tonight between seven and eight o'clock. And within minutes, I want one, I want one, I want one. And it just kind of spiraled from there. You know, I was running around my town delivering people were coming to my house, picking up. And then one day someone was like, Hey, could you come to my house and do a birthday party like this? And we talked about it and we figured out how to do a birthday party. So I went and I did a birthday party and she let me take some pictures and I picked some pictures up on social media. It's the people started commenting. Can you do my birthday party? Can you do my mom's uh, graduation party? Can you do this bar mitzvah? And it's just social media. Like I had no idea the power of social media and, and I'm super hyper local. Like I'm literally only doing business in my town. I've barely branched out to the two neighboring towns and there's just tons of opportunity. Yeah, that's amazing. So yep. you basically went to, you were in a group that you're already in um, yep. and you're like, hey, this is what I'm doing. I've got these ice cream sandwiches I've made. If yep. you're interested, uh, yep. let me know or come by tomorrow at three o'clock because yep. we'll be on the street yep. selling them. And yep. people were like, that's how, yep. and, then, and then you were like, hey, here's a sampler pack. I've only got seven which is yep. scarcity and people are like oh, yes. immediately there's only seven so now there's absolutely. scarcity i gotta get absolutely one. right absolutely the scarcity thing it wasn't intentional mm-hmm. but then i started to play off of it and yeah 
be, it be, yeah. What did become hard was I, there were then other groups. There's the Paul Washington Moms Group. There's the Paul Washington Parents Group. There's, you know, and I was posting them all and managing them was challenging. So I, I've, I've had to navigate figuring out that because people would text me orders. They'd Instagram message me orders. They'd Facebook message me orders. They'd, I created a website. They'd order on the website. And managing it all has been a little bit of a challenge. And I need to, you know, I've learned a lot about social media, but I also am a social media dummy. And I, I do need to, something I've actually thought about outsourcing and finding someone that can handle it for me and promote it better and manage yeah. it a little better. Yeah, awesome. Well, if you if you want to uh, chat about that sometime, we'd be happy to sure. happy to do Absolutely. that um, anytime. We've done it before. <laughs> Been doing it. And, and that's what we've done. But uh, so um, I think that's, dude, that's awesome. I think, I think the question I have for you that a lot of people are wondering or people I've taught about scarcity before is they're like, oh, but if it's not real scarcity, how is it? They're basically asking, how is that? Why is that ethical? You know, if you've only made seven, like there's really only seven. But if I'm like, I need to get you off the fence to do this or say, hey, I've only got seven available this week. How is that something that uh, you sleep well doing right. at night? Yeah, I have I have no. I've never even thought about it as an issue. Like I'm, there are there are things that I think about from an ethical perspective. Like, is it a problem or not? This one doesn't bother me at all. You know, like yeah. I have a product that people want, and if they feel as if they have to get it now in order to be able to get it, and there's a lot of truth behind it too. Like most of the time, if I say there's seven, there's just seven. Like there might be six more the next day, mm -hmm. but there's only seven right now. Um, you know, like I'm not. I'm not taking anything from anybody that they don't, I'm not giving anything to anybody that they don't want or don't need, or, well, no, they don't need it. Nobody needs ice cream. Everyone um, wants it though. <laughs> everybody wants it though. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, I don't view it as an ethical problem at all. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, I think that to me, the way I see it and people ask is like, well, if it's, if it's something I know they want and I'm just trying to help them get it, how do I, can I help them get it now rather than mm -hmm. think about it for three or four days and go, no, I really don't need the ice cream. Right. <laughs> I should go to the gym instead. Yeah. Do both. You know, yeah. um, that's awesome. I, I appreciate that answer. Um, I think, uh, w like, tell me what's working for you, like social media wise, like what are the posts? Like, what are you actually saying? Like specifically, can, can you just like spell it out? Like pretend like we're like even more like brand new to social media. Like what is it that you're actually saying on like a post that gets a lot of attention or a lot of sales? Um, I'm explaining what the product is. I'm talking about the fact that it's homemade. Um, I'm talking about the fact that it's unique. Um, and I am, I'm, what else am I saying specific? Pictures, mm -hmm. you know, pictures go a long way. Like I'm, I'm using real pictures that are beautiful and do a great job making people look at it and say, I want that or make them think I need that now. Um, and I try and be a little witty, a little clever, um, you know, like just keep things fresh. I don't bombard people, you know, I, I don't bombard people over and over with the same stuff. I try and keep the content a little bit new and fresh. Um, yeah, like that. Yeah. Awesome. So it's like, you're just kind of being yourself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. What is there a secret to taking good pictures for social media that you found? No, the, my best pictures, I actually have a neighbor who's a photographer and he has come and helped me and take some great pictures. I've had some customers take great pictures and send them to me and I get their permission, excuse me, to use them. Um, my product happens to be very picture friendly, like it's bright and colorful. The iPhone is a great camera, you know, like, you know, I, like I just, there's a little spot that I use that there's a white background and I just yeah. take pictures and I'm pretty happy with it. Yeah. That's awesome. It's amazing. So it's actually pretty simple. It is. Yeah. It's think, not, it's not that hard. You're right. Yeah. It's not that hard. Right. And I think what, I, I think what I hear intimidates a lot of people is they're like the concept of, well, I need to get a professional photographer and I have to have a light box for all these things where I don't even know it. It's like, it's just really a lot of it's iPhone point and shoot or find a neighbor yes. or someone else who can come over maybe you pay them a couple hundred bucks and they take a bunch yeah. of pictures and you can use them forever. That's exactly right. Right. Exactly. What, right. what, um, if you were explaining how you did this to someone who'd never built a business before, what are the like 
like the top three to five steps that they would need to take to not only build it, but get people to come and uh, start offloading some of their time? Like, do you know, like the, what would be like your handful um, of things if you were trying to explain like how you did this to someone in, in a minute? I think that I had to do my due diligence and research and development in terms of making sure that my product was good enough to sell. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I had to be willing to take a risk and just put myself out there without any idea of whether it would work or not and see what happened. And then I needed to be malleable in terms of finding out what the customers want and giving it to them like birthday cake. Oh yeah, I can make a birthday cake. And then marketing those birthday cakes, birthday party, school events, you know, like being able to be nimble and be able to make changes on the fly to be able to meet the customers exactly. Well. Yeah. That's awesome. I know you said like, this is important for your community is that's one of the reasons to build this business. What are you doing for your community or is it bringing people together? Is it donating some of the proceeds or both, or is there something else that you're doing to. So as part of our mission, um, a good percentage of all profits go to the community Chesapeake, Washington, which is our local charity that supports the, it's like one conglomerate that supports 20 or 25 different charities in Port Washington. So that is by mission, but You know, anybody that comes to me that has an idea or anything, like we just did a mental health march and they wanted, you know, the first time Port Washington had a mental health march and they wanted to give out food to the participants. So I donated smush to them. I've donated smush to schools. I've donated smush to any community event. Like I want to be part of the community, give back to the community, make people smile in the community, um, help out however I can, you know, sporting teams, you know, like we sponsor, you know, football teams, baseball teams, we'll have special parties for them at the end of the year, you know, kids coming into kindergarten, you know, like anything that we can do to try and be part of the community, support the community, and help them to give back. That's awesome. Well, yeah. that sounds great. Why is that so important to you, Steve? I'm very fortunate, you know, like I, I, you know, through hard work and some good luck, you know, like I was able to create a nice business, you know, for my dad and we were able to sell that and, you know, it's, I've made a nice living and I've been able to provide for my family and do really nicely and live in a nice house in a nice community. And there's a lot of people that can't do that or need help doing that. And it's just, it's something that's important to me to try and, you know, share and help anybody yeah. that, that I can. That's awesome. Is there any question that I should have asked you that I, maybe I didn't, uh, that you think would be um, helpful for people to know? I don't know, you know. Nothing that I can think of, you know, nothing yeah. that nothing that pops into mind. Why do you think uh why do you think most of our friends from college like didn't start a business? Because they're all lawyers. <laughs> 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 um i mean I you, know, it's like you, know, you like, and I, seth i think is there any, right. maybe freddie Freddy, I, Fre- I think freddie did something too yeah. um look it, it it's a you have to be cut from a certain cloth you have to be willing to take risks you have to be willing to bust your butt um and you have to have something that you're passionate about and want to do as well you know like you know like it's not easy it's not it's not, it's a lot of work, but it, it is fun. It is rewarding. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of like, I don't know that it's even on people's mind. Like a lot of people, like, people just go through like most, most people probably don't even think about starting their own business. Yeah. It's just not what they just want to go to work. Yeah. You know, I, so we've been talking a lot about ice cream business, right? But you had a health, you had a healthcare business for what, 10 years? Was it longer? I mean, almost your dad 20. owned it for a long time, but you yeah, were you no, in no, it? I was there for 20? I was there for almost twenty. Twenty years. Wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> time goes we're by old, fast. Darren. We, we are, are old. old. I got wrinkles and all the things. <laughs> um, okay, so what have you learned? Like you know about my business because we've talked a lot about it over the years. Um, what what is it that you've learned in your business that relates to us taking care of patients? Like, is it the customer service piece? Is it the product piece? Is there something? from your experience that you can share that you think, you know, like, you know, maybe someone who's struggling to fill their practice with enough patients, like that they might know uh, or need to know or learn from you based on your experiences and your businesses. A couple of things that I have definitely absorbed from what you, and a long time ago, I remember you having a post about calling yourself a doctor. 
mm-hmm. and how that was important and how you are a doctor. Like you, like I, I don't remember exactly what it was, but like you are the expert, like you are the professional, you are the person that comes in there and helps the patient, helps them get better, you know, figures out what the problem is and, you know, creates a plan for them to, you know, be able to live their life the way they want to live it, you know? And while I did a while ago, like I did say, I'm not a baker, I'm not, a, I'm not an expert on that, but the reality is I am a baker now, you know, like I, I have spent a lot of time experimenting on cookies and different recipes and brownies and things like that. And I do have to shift my mind a little bit. So like you are proud and want to present yourself as that expert. I I should be doing that as well. Like I am, I am an, it's hard for me to even say it, but I am an expert at what I do now and I need to change that mentality. Um, Something else that you, and then so something I'm struggling with too is that you know, you've talked a lot about is you've always said if you provide the service that people need and if you make them better, they'll pay you whatever whatever you charge. Like mm. the money doesn't become an issue at that point. Like you're worth whatever you think you're worth to them if you can help them be their kid's soccer coach or you know go to work and not have back pain or whatever it is. Um, and I struggle with that too. Like my product is worth more than I think it's worth. And I do have to figure out how to charge more for it because I, there's no reason for me to just give it away. Like I spend my time making it, you know, thinking about it, promoting it, you know, all that, you know, that, that has value that I need to understand and appreciate has value to other people too. Yeah. That's awesome. That's important. Thank you for yeah. sharing that. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Dude, this has been awesome. I'm like, I love doing this and I'm like, I need to do this more often, but I think this is great. I get to learn a lot about, uh, people that are my close friends. Uh, so thank yeah, you for, sure. for sharing this, Steve. Um, Steve, if someone wants to reach out and ask you, connect with you on social media or even just like, uh, scope out your, uh, social media, um, presence, like where do they find you? Like maybe Instagram, Facebook, or your website. So on Instagram, it's, um, smushed. It's S M U S H T underscore p is in peter w um facebook is just smushed it's at s-m-u-s-h-t and my website is www.smushedsmushed.com dude that's awesome and you bought that website you were all 15 20 years ago i did and you know it's such like Great. it's such a tough word to say and yeah. spell and pronounce that I have to have smushed and smushed and smushed and you know I have to have all the ones right close to it with the typos so they all come to me. S C H M U S C. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's so great. Yeah, you have like you must have like a, a URL list that's quite long yeah. now too. Yeah. Yes, for sure. I've got a bunch. Well, this is yeah. great. Um, if you guys uh, got anything out of this show um, with uh, Steve and I, it would be amazing if you could drop a comment below the video or uh, shout us out on social media or even uh, leave us a five-star rating review and let us know what your big takeaway was Um, and uh, make sure that you go out there take the risks because the risk is definitely worth the reward especially when the reward is ice cream so thanks for listening and we'll see you on the next show